Hello and welcome to my Turkish Grand Prix driver predictions, the series in which you guys, the audience, can get involved by following the link that is in the top line of the description. You can submit your predictions to kind of guess exactly what will happen this weekend. But without further ado, let us jump on into the Turkish Grand Prix predictions and explain basically how this series works in order for you guys to be entered into the audience prediction championships. So by following that link in the top line of the description, you'll be asked for your top five for qualifying, your top five for the race, and one bold, encompassing statement throughout the entire weekend. Now just a couple of rules to clear some things up. The top five for qualifying is based on the qualifying result, not the starting grid. So ignore any incoming grid penalties for drivers or any incoming grid penalties that happen at any point during the weekend. It will be the result of Q3 at the end of qualifying, not the starting grid. You can equally make as many submissions to this link as you like, right up until the start of qualifying. So if you would like to wait until practice one, two, and three are all done and dusted to make your predictions to enable yourself to get a slightly better prediction for the weekend, then by all means do that. But if you'd like to be a bit like myself and get them in nice and early, then you can also do that as well. And if you do make multiple submissions, I will just take your most recent submission as your final one. Now, there is a small little scoring system for this little series as well. You will receive two points for a correct driver in the correct position for your top five in qualifying, and one point if you have a correct driver but in the incorrect position inside your top five. Exactly the same scoring is then done for the top five for the race, and then for the bold statement, it is five bonus points if it is remotely accurate. And this bold statement can literally apply to any portion of the weekend. It can apply to a practice session, qualifying, or the race, and it can be as precise or as vague as you like. That is entirely up to you. And if we just take a quick look at the current summated leaderboard, it is Evan Darcy who is knocking on the door of 200 points so far this season. Closely followed by Joe Bishop by 19 points, and then six behind them is Danielle B. With myself on 158, just, just ahead of a Doctor Who channel and also Hal Lowe as well, with Elliot joining the fight on 149. We then get to a couple people who have joined the 100 point club. This is Elian, Mattia Bonotto and Torst Torst as well with the second half of this leaderboard looking a bit like this for the people who have not entered into every single round of this predictions series so far. There is then a second leaderboard overall with people like Mika Tukkanen, Ratchet, Darn Klava, Marco Daly and of course there is then a second half to this leaderboard as well and then finally there is another final leaderboard. There are 129 individual unique entries across this entire season and I cannot thank you guys enough for the support for this series. But not to worry if you haven't entered into every single round of this series and see yourself low down in this submitted leaderboard. On the video that gets released on Sunday I also do a average points for the rounds that you have entered. So if you see yourself super high up in that leaderboard you know you are an exceptional predictor. But what we'll do now is we will go over my predictions for this weekend's Grand Prix, going over my top five for qualifying, my top five for the race, and then one bold encompassing statement. So for qualifying for the Turkish Grand Prix, for pole position, I've gone with Max Verstappen. And in P2, I think this is rather bold, Charles Leclerc. P3, Lewis Hamilton, P4, Valtteri Bottas, and P5, Sergio Perez. Now, Turkey is going to be a really, really difficult one to actually nail some predictions for. Of the remaining tracks this season, it's pretty much even between Red Bull and Mercedes. Obviously, there's going to be a couple that do favour Red Bull, like Mexico, etc. and Brazil. But then there's a couple that will favour the Mercedes. And unfortunately, Turkey, we don't have any historical data for that. As last year's race was strange. Now they have retreated the track surface to hopefully remove some of that slippery bitumen that was uh, leaking out due to the rain that was at the track. So hopefully it's not going to be as hectic. So we have really no idea how well the cars are going to perform. But I think the Ferrari, and especially in the hands of Charles Leclerc, is going to be a monster, a monster of a car. Because think how well it was doing in 2020. So that is why I've gone for a Charles de Klerk front row start alongside Max Verstappen. I do believe it's going to be so uber close. There isn't going to be one driver that super dominates the weekend. 
And then for my race top five, I've gone for a Max Verstappen victory, followed by Lewis Hamilton in P2 and Charles de Klerk completing that podium. Lando Norris in the McLaren in P4 and Carlos Sainz in the Ferrari in P5, bumping Bottas and Perez outside of the top five for the race. Honestly, uh, this I've just thrown some names into a hat. I really really don't know what is going to happen this weekend whatsoever. But I do think that Max Verstappen, if he starts on pole position, could quite easily lead from start to finish. However, we do know that overtaking can be done at this circuit. Look back, I mean, even last year overtaking did happen, but look back at the previous Turkish Grand Prix. There is overtaking opportunities and overtaking can happen at this circuit. So... We could be in for another interesting race, I really don't know, but I think this is a fairly comfortable top five finish. Which then leads me on to my bold statement for this weekend's race, there will be five DNFs this GP. Now I was expecting quite a few DNFs in the Russian Grand Prix, however there were only two and they weren't really interesting DNFs. One was a mechanical failure, or I think both were actually mechanical failures for Schumacher and Latifi. So I think there could be a little bit more action involved in this weekend's Turkish Grand Prix. So I've gone for five DNFs overall. And there we go. There are my predictions for this weekend's Turkish Grand Prix all done and dusted. Please let me know in the comments down below what you thought of my predictions, as well as following that link in the top line of the description to get your predictions sent into the database. And just as a little side note, I am currently making these predictions on Tuesday, so we still have quite a ways away to go until the weekend. But I'm sticking true to myself and only making one set of predictions and not adjusting them. So making them on Tuesday could be my downfall. Who knows? But that is all I've got for you today, guys. I hope you have enjoyed, and I will catch you in the next episode of whatever and whenever I decide to make it. I'll see you guys then.